right, so now that we have um, constructed our histogram, or drawn our histogram, um, we're going to move to part two and calculate estimates of the mean mark and the standard deviation. So because we're actually doing a calculation now, rather than constructing a histogram, we had made all of these uh, new boundaries, like 0 0.5 and 20.5, 30.5, 45, 40.5. But we're not going to use those anymore because we're interested in constructing um, an accurate estimate of things, of our data. Um, rather than trying to take data that's technically discrete and forging it into a continuous model. So, that being said, we're going to go back to our old bounds from 1 to 20, 21 to 30, and so on. And our first step when we're finding the mean, right? Well, we have to think about what the mean is. It's the middle, or I mean, not it's the middle, it's the average of our values, right? Um, the problem is our data is grouped, and we don't necessarily know um, you know, how many of these 40 people scored a 15 or a 10 or a 20? I mean, it's, it's possible that all 40 of those people scored 20. It's also possible that all 40 of them scored 1. We don't know. What we do know, though, is that we can t make um, an assumption that most of the people probably, well, we know that all 40 people scored between 1 and 20 inclusive of those two numbers. So it stands to reason that if we found the midpoint and we multiplied the, that number of people, 40, by our midpoint, um, you know, that'd be a fair estimate of all the scores in this added together. Is it completely accurate? Absolutely not. Because unless you know the raw data, it's never going to be accurate. But it, it, it is a reasonable estimate, and we're not finding an accurate, like, perfectly accurate mean. We're finding an estimate of our mean. So what that entails is finding the midpoint of each of these, okay? And then basically what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, 40 people scored between 1 and 20. If I take the midpoint and multiply that by 40, if some people scored 1, if some people scored 20, you know, the midpoint's going to counteract the fact that they could be on either end of the spectrum or continuum in that point, and we're going to get as accurate of an estimate of the mean as we can. So I went through and I made a table. I wrote all the midpoints, so you might just want to double check that you know how to find midpoints um, with my table. And then all I did was I took my midpoint and I multiplied it by my frequency, and I let my midpoint equal x here. So you can see in my table I said x times my frequency. And of course, on your Cambridge exams, you don't need to be this, um, you probably don't need to write things out to this degree, but you should write something out so that they know that you know what you're doing. Um, you know, you don't want to just come up with the sum and then have it be wrong. You want to show that maybe I said 10.5 times 40 and 25.5 times 34. And I'm getting these 40 and 34 from this table. So F is the frequency. Okay. Um, you know, and then you could even on your paper just say dot, 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 you know, if you're not doing the table. And then do the last one, 68 times 21. And that way they would know that you know um, how to at least get started and you can get method marks for this. Okay. So basically all I'm doing is midpoint times frequency, and you could maybe even just write that out, that that's what you're doing. Okay, then, okay, so that's kind of what we're doing. We're kind of finding the average and summing them up, right? Okay, here's the thing, though. When we have group data, we calculate the mean using this equation. This is given to you on your Cambridge exam sheet, okay? Um, oh, hold on just a second to sum up. Let me give you a different this is the one you use on your Cambridge exam sheet. What this means, right, um, is that the sigma, Greek letter sigma, means sum, the sum of x times f. Well, look what I have. I have x times f here. Mm -hmm. Now I just need to sum it. So here's my sum. I'm going to add this with this, with this, with this, with this, with this. And I have it totaled over here. It's this value. So I'm going to replace the sum of xf with, 8, 7, 6, 9, 5, and you should definitely have this number written on your Cambridge exam. 
And then what I do know about my frequency was given to me in the problem. If I were to add all of these numbers up, the problem says it's 234. So my frequency is really my n value, the number of people that sat for this particular paper. All right, so my mean, my exact mean is this. But um, I'm pretty sure this is not going to be an exact number. I could be wrong. Okay, it's not. It is approximately 37, and I'm rounding 2.5 because it's 37.476, but we round on our Cambridge exams to three significant figures, or three significant digits, actually. Um, so I'm going to, oops, I'm on the wrong line. The mean x bar is equal to 37. Point, I don't know why I wrote a 6. 37.5. Okay, that's great. Now we need to do the standard deviation. Okay, and you'll notice that I left this here on my Cambridge paper. I were taking this. I would write this as my answer um, because they want three significant digits, but I would keep this fraction because you're going to have to use it for the uh, for the, um, let me see my words here, for the standard deviation. Okay, so speaking of standard deviation, I'm actually going to find the variance first. Um, well, actually, variance is just standard deviation squared. Um, so I'm going to say the variance is equal, well, actually, I'll just give you the equation that's on your paper. Oops, that's not what I need to do. Oh, no. What do you do? Okay, sorry, the standard deviation is equal to the square root of, are you ready for this? <laughs> this is on your sheet, the sum of our x value squared times our frequency divided by our frequency minus our mean squared, okay, and it's the square root of all of that. So basically, remember how I said keep your mean because we need the exact value? This is why we need the exact value. If we put 37.5 in, I mean, the value that you get from rounding that off is pretty different than the value you get when you're accurate. And as you know, Cambridge goes down to the decimal, um, so we don't want to lose points because we used a rounded number. Okay, so you'll notice also on my table that I have one more row, and that says x squared times f. Well, what you can see when we calculate the variance is that we have x squared times f and the sum of all of that. So basically, my x was my midpoint, so I said 10.5 squared times my frequency, which was 40 from my table. Okay, and I did that with all of these, 25.5 squared. Basically, I took this number up here and squared it and then times it by the frequency. Okay, da, da, da. I could keep going like this, and then maybe do the last one, just like we talked about last time, so they know that you did it for all of them. Okay, if you were doing a table, you would get all of these individual values, but we're not interested in individual values necessarily. We're interested in the sum of those individual values. So I'm adding all of these green numbers together, and when I do that, I get this sum. Okay, this green number is sigma x squared times f. Okay, so what I can replace this whole numerator with is 3953.17.5. My frequency is still 234, okay, because the number of people in this have not changed. Minus, I know my mean from the first part. So this is just a good reminder that you can't find the um, standard deviation if you don't find the mean right away. Okay, and then I'm going to square this, and then I'm going to put this into my calculator. Okay, so square root of 3953.17.5 divided by 234 minus, um, uh, let's see, 8769.5 divided by 234 quantity. Error quantity squared, and I get about 16.9, and that's rounded down from 16.879 to 16.9 because they want to one decimal place or 
three significant digits, which is what this month is in this case. So sigma equals 16.9, and that is how you do. This is a pretty high point problem, 9 out of 50 points. It's almost 20% of the points. So if you can get this down, that's a good indication that, you know, you're getting 20% of the vet points on this stats test. So um, that is how you find the mean and the standard deviation. Okay.